Okay, thank you, Ms. Collins. Again, introduce yourself, tell what organization you represent, you have one minute each. Thank you, Senators. Fred Jones on behalf of the California Business Education Association. We're also part of the Get Real Coalition, so you'll hear from some of our colleagues from industry and labor. We share all of the concerns that Mr. Johnson has articulated regarding ADA and the local match. And most importantly to our employers, we want high accountability, high standards, high quality CTE. The ADA concern is twofold. One is, will it go to all high schools and middle schools equally, or just to those that are already providing career tech? So that's a big difference, because one district that's providing it shouldn't reduce their funding to a district that hasn't ever provided it. Um, so maybe the possible middle ground is an ADA rollout this fiscal year with very strong accountability next year how they spent it. And that will determine whether they receive any future grants, maybe even payback if they didn't live up to their commitments. Finally, I'll say the state's level of commitment to CTE right now is $626 million a year. This is $400, $400 million a year. So there's already going to be some decrease to high quality programs that are already out there. The more you can approach 600, the less concern we're going to have that these high quality programs are going to take a reduction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. Mr. Chairman, members, Jeff Frost representing the California Association of Suburban School Districts here in support of the staff recommendation for a per ADA allocation. Um, from our standpoint, the LCFF established the 912 CTE allocation that rolls in over time and expands over time. The per ADA allocation is an excellent opportunity for all districts to be able to participate. Um, to the point that the LAO made regarding um, most of these programs or many of these programs are done in a collaborative manner. That's where you get more bang for your buck. And to Senator Morlock's point, um, it would be easy to create a minimum floor for small districts. That's not uncommon in other programs. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, Jeremy Smith here on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council. We are also part of the Get Real Coalition, as mentioned earlier um, by Mr. Jones. We share the concerns by the Department of Finance. Uh, we are more inclined to be supportive of, of the uh, proposal outlined by the governor, uh, a more competitive proposal, so that we know, uh, and with, with uh, accountability and oversight, because that's the crux of our concerns. Um, uh, there's not enough oversight on these districts to make sure they're spending the CTE money they get on good, high-quality CTE. So we prefer um, the, the accountability measures included in the original governor's proposals and would, uh, would, would urge the committee to take a look at their proposal and, and try and make it go with theirs a little closer. Thanks. Thank you. Next speaker. Nicole Rice, California Manufacturers and Technology Association, also a member of the Get Real Coalition. Um, we also, too, uh, share the concerns that the Department of Finance does with the staff recommendations for this proposal. Um, as an industry that is in critical need of skilled labor, we definitely want to see high quality industry relevant programs. And so to the extent that we have the appropriate funding level that's more um, aligned to where the state's current commitment is for funding programs that are, that's the, and that two, uh, $626 million that was mentioned, that's about to expire at the end of this fiscal year. Coupled with uh, accountability as well as the um, state plan accountability criteria that, um, that outlines what those level criteria need to be in order to have a high quality CTE program. And then again, having that accountability that um, my colleague from Building Trades just mentioned. We see that as a, a recipe for success, to not necessarily fund the status quo, but to actually ensure that these programs are creating industry-relevant, high-quality uh, courses and outcomes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Pat Whalen, Ellison Wilson Advocacy here on behalf of the Southern California Regional Occupational Center. As you know, we are a standalone campus that provides high-quality CTE for our six-member school districts and beyond. We're, we're uh, JPA. Um, Senate, uh, Superintendent Torlickson has described our facility as the model and the way CTE should be delivered in the state. W with regard to the governor's proposal, we would simply ask that um, the language be such that a JPA or a regional occupational center is eligible to apply. We think we could compete very well 
I would uh, refer you back to the Career Pathways uh, grant. When that was first enacted, we were not eligible to apply just through an oversight. That was corrected, and we appreciate that. We'd like that similar language in this. With respect to the staff proposal, we would again just ask that to ensure that we could compete or, or that we could apply that the ADA calculation be flexible enough to allow us to utilize these students that we get from our member school districts. Thank you. Next, please. Wait, I, I just want to clarify. It's my understanding that the governor's language does include uh, space for JPA. We, we, we agree. We, we, the trailer bill language we saw does include it. We would just ask that that be retained because we, we got okay. burned one time on career pathways. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Nancy Lacasse, and I'm representing the Metropolitan Education District. They're the largest JPA ROC in the state of California, and just would like to align uh, myself with Mr. Wayland's comments, uh, the Southern, who represents the Southern California JPA largest. And also just to say that it, it is an issue of funding. There are programs out there that have been squeezed, obviously, for the last several years, and it now's the time to just reinvest in these critical programs for students. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Enrique Roacho with the California Association of School Business Officials and one, just want to state that we're in support of the staff recommendation to move to on an ADA basis. We believe that this would be the most effective way to, to ensure that needs across the state are met. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, I'm Mac with the Association of California School Administrators, and I'd just like to ditto the previous comments. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, Leticia Garcia with Riverside County Schools. Um, we, um, we support staff recommendation. Uh, we believe that that recommendation um, essentially um, is aligned with our beliefs that CTE is part of our core academic programs. Um, so um, the per ADA allocation um, will ensure that that continues to, um, to happen. Um, we would suggest that that allocation is um, focused on the nine through 12 um, grades and um, we also believe that the LCAP already has a mechanism to ensure that these programs are quality in nature. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good afternoon. Marta Alvarez of the San Diego Unified School District. Um, like the previous speakers, we also work, um, support the staff recommendation to appropriate on a per ADA for 912 students. Um, it is, as the LAO mentioned, that um, the API score will be um, revisited to include multiple measures, including CTE and other course and college and career readiness um, indicators. And so we think that it's important that all kids 9 to 12 have the access to this funding, that it is Prop 98 and is more equitable to be given on a per ADA. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you. Liz Guillen with Public Advocates. Um, we support the staff recommendation as well. Um, but to the extent um, you don't adopt that, um, I definitely want to point out that the, the conditions for receipt, the accountability conditions that the staff recommends have very, very uh, much to, to offer. They are much, much stronger. And they're even stronger than what the LCAP requires currently. Um, so I just want to point that out. As was said earlier, to the extent the ROP programs are allowed to use this money and use the students uh, for their, uh, from their member districts, that money is likely supplemental and concentration funding. And therefore, there needs to be a real focus on whether or not this is an improvement and an increase for them coming from districts that supposedly have CT programs then to an ROP. I hope that's clear. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the chair's recommendation on this, and I'll be happy to entertain questions from committee members, is going to be to help put this off till the end of the agenda for vote only. In the interim, when we get to the higher ed portion of our agenda, K-12 staff will work with some stakeholders, refine the language, um, work with the pro tem's office. So we will bring back a recommendation, which may or may not be the same as the one before you now, um, at the end of the agenda for vote only, if there's no objection. Okay, in that case, we will move on now to item 15. Item 15, Charter School Facilities Grant Program. And by the way, I want to thank all the folks who spoke just now. You gave us a lot of good input that um, will be used by staff when when she goes back and takes another look at the language. Appreciate that. Um, Charter School Facilities Grant Program, start with the Department of Finance. 
Maritza Urquiza, Department of Finance. The May Revision Trailer Bill proposes additional changes to the Charter School Facility Grant Program. These changes build upon the Governor's Budget proposal to expand program eligibility to additional charter schools uh, by reducing the free or reduced price meal requirements from 70% to 55%. The Governor's Budget also proposed an increase of 50 million Proposition 98 funding for this program. The May Revision proposes to further expand the program by increasing the maximum grant amounts. Um, current law sets the maximum grant amount at a, the lesser of 75% of facility rent and lease expenditures or 70, $750 per pupil. If funds are available after fully funding the existing maximum grant uh, awards, the May revision proposal would allow those additional funds to be apportioned to those eligible charter schools at a level not to exceed $1,000 per pupil or 100% of the school's facilities rent and lease expenditures. The funding per pupil amount hasn't been adjusted for inflation since 2002, yet facility costs have gone up. We recognize that charter schools don't have the same tools that um, other public schools have to fund facilities, and we recognize that charter schools are unique in that most um, rent and lease their facilities and that this program is widely used by charter schools. For these reasons, our May revision um, pr pr proposal doesn't make any changes to the um, 50 million in governor's budget and proposes to raise the grant amounts to continue to support charter schools um, with their facility needs. Additionally, the May Revision Trailer Bill pro uh, language proposes to simplify the program by eliminating the second review of, da of data on pupils eligible for free or uh, reduced price meals when determining program eligibility. Thank you. Let's move now to LEO. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And members, Kenneth Capon with the Analyst's Office. So I think as you heard the Department of Finance say, there's really two proposals on the table for you. One of these proposals is from January, and that's to lower the requirement that these charter schools serve 70% low-income students down to 55%. So that expands the pool of eligible charter schools for this funding. The May revision, um, in addition to that change, increases the maximum grant award to a maximum of 1,000 per pupil or 100% of costs, whichever is higher. I think our, our reaction to this one is a mixed one. We think the January proposal has merit. Uh, currently, charter schools that are just above that threshold are eligible for this funding. Charter schools just below the threshold um, really don't receive state funding. And so there's kind of a, uh, an issue where charter schools that receive funding um, they can get a lot of their facilities costs covered. Charter schools just below um, have these same costs but don't receive state funding. So we think expanding the program in that way makes sense. It would also allow the state in future years if it wants to roll out a broader grant-based program that's funded on a per ADA basis. I think we've talked about that in past hearings. But if the state does want to go that route, this, uh, th this, this January option is an interim step in that direction. We do have concerns with the May revision proposal. We're concerned that um, ex by expanding eligibility to cover up to 100% of costs, the state would remove one of the key incentives charter schools have right now to find cost-effective facilities. Um, in addition, we don't think that's a very well targeted increase. We think that charter schools already receiving funding um, may not have as many needs as the charter schools that currently are eligible for no funding at all. Um, so our, um, we also think that, um, so we'd recommend adopting the January proposal, um, rejecting the May revision proposal. Um, regarding the um, timing of the review of data, um, we, we think that could be an option the legislature would look at. We're concerned that that has some technical issues right now. We'd recommend um, um, asking the Department of Finance to come back with some modifications to address our technical concerns. Um, we'd also recommend you reduce the proposed 50 million augmenta augmentation to 8 million, bringing total funding for the program to 100 million. We think that's sufficient to fund exist all existing applicants plus the pro proposed expansion under January. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from members of the committee? Yeah. Senator Allen. Yeah, I'm having trouble understanding these the numbers here. Um, you know. We're, we're, okay, so so when we got one side saying that the augmentation only requires 15 million, the other side saying 50 million, um, they sound alike, but they're very different. Uh, can you give me a little rationale as to where you got these numbers from, both sides? Well, actually, the in terms of finance and LAO, the difference it's 50 million and 8 million. Okay, 8 correct. million. And then the staff recommendation is in the middle at 15. 
Well, it's not really in the middle. It's way down by eight. But it's, it's between the two. Okay. Correct. Sure. Um, during uh, governor's budget, um, we had limited information on how, mu how much it would cost to lower the threshold from 70% to 55%. After looking at um, those numbers uh, more closely, there are multiple assumptions and vari variables that make it difficult to project exactly how much would be needed to fund the program by lowering that free and reduced price meal eligibility threshold. Um, uh, we do recognize that the 50 million is uh, likely more than enough to cover to that um, to cover uh, by lowering that to cover charter schools after lowering that threshold. However, um, it's difficult to come up with an actual estimate. So um, our May revision proposal essentially says that if there are any savings after funding the maximum grant amounts, th those savings would go back to um, those eligible charter schools by raising the maximum grant amounts. LAO? We developed a cost estimate by looking at um, charter school level data on the actual facility costs charter schools reported, the actual um, income eligibility they reported, and some other indicators to get a sense of whether they're in an eligible facility or not. Um, you know, there's various ways to run these estimates. Um, we're pretty confident that ours is, if anything, a little bit on the generous side. Um, we, we think this $8 million augmentation is really all that would be needed to fund the expansion combined with the existing resources in the program. I, I mean, it, this is a pretty, pretty big gap. Um, you know, we have lots of gaps. We're oftentimes disagreeing about numbers. Um, most of them seem are usually because of much greater spec, kind of greater speculation about the future of the economy, et cetera. But on this one, I, I'm not. I guess I'm. So maybe LAO feels pretty confident about their estimation. I'm not hearing as much specificity with regards to the formula that was used to determine the 50 million out of the Department of Finance. And I guess I, do you have any response to that or? or? Uh, again, the, the, the estimates are based on a number of, yourself, sorry, Juan with the Department of Finance. The, the estimates are based on a number of assumptions and, and, and variables. One of the ways that charter schools qualify is by using the school's free reduced price meal Another way is that they use the elementary um, elementary school's attendance area for reduced price meal. So you'd have to take a look at all of the charter schools and then look at the, the elementary schools that are, that are closest to that charter school to, to estimate whether they have those numbers. Uh, we also know that you know, lowering the, fresh, the threshold could increase participation in the future, perhaps not right now. So it's another variable that we don't know in terms of how many more charter schools will be willing to participate knowing that the threshold has been lowered. So there's multiple variables that, that come into play when you do any estimate. We know that. That's why we didn't come up with a specific number. But instead, we do have a mechanism to address any potential um, savings that are in the program as far as how that money is redistributed to the ones that do apply. Well, I, I get that. But, that, but I mean, you're basically saying, OK, well, we'll just give them some more money um, beyond what we're being told is required and obviously you know the governor is famously careful with the state budget uh so i understand that there's a place to put the money that comes in surplus mm -hmm. we could all find places to put that money uh but i but this this still doesn't kind of help me better understand where the need is i i agree with with lowering the eligibility threshold i think it's a good thing mm -hmm. and i want to provide funding i like the fact that the staff provided a cushion um, I see. I still see how much smaller it is in the governors. I'm thinking maybe it ought to be a little higher, uh, but I'm not. Though I, I, you know, I'm, I'm still not. You, you telling me that that you've got a plan for the excess money if you're not able to spend it all is helpful in understanding process, but it doesn't necessarily help me in understanding need with regards to this item in this program. Again, we don't have a specific figure on what it would take. To, to cover have you have you had a chance to look at the LAO's kind of budget analysis and the way that they drew up these figures? We have, and again, it's based on many many assumptions uh, with multiple. Do you disagree? I mean, what do you most disagree? Do you disagree with a particular aspect of their? Uh, those two factors: one is wh whether there's going to be an increased participation, uh, and and two, you know, how accurate are the figures using the uh, elementary schools free and reduced price meal data that is most closely. Um, uh, located to the charter school. 
Okay. D have you discussed this with Mr. At, at, th thank you, Senator Allen. You know, this is something where we've been talking on and off with the Department of Finance. Um, you know, again, I, I feel like we're pretty confident in our numbers. We're happy to have another discussion with the Department of Finance and see if we can get some resolution. But um, I, I would say just in the two points, our estimates also bake into, uh, bake into um, uh, take into account some uh, assumptions that charter schools will be able to qualify based on their nearest elementary school district. Um, we were able to model, use some mapping software and look at kind of where the nearest elementary charter school was to get a fix on that. Um, regarding the um, kind of cost increases, we do think it's possible that lowering the threshold would encourage some charter schools maybe to take a new look at their facility options, but we don't see that happening in the two or three months before the start of the 15-16 school year. Um, facility arrangements just don't come together that quickly, um, so this would be more of an out-year cost pressure. We don't think it needs to be, the program needs to be preemptively increased in the budget year. So, Mr. Chair, I, I'm just... I'm finding it difficult to make a decision on this item. Obviously, we've been given 20 million things to decide on today, but this struck me as one where there is a such a considerable um, difference in, and I don't feel that I have the time or the immediate expertise to be able to really uh, parse apart. I understand that the staff recommended a, a, an amount that was higher than the LEOs, though certainly nowhere near the governor's proposal. They're both, you know, saying to us that they've had a thoughtful. Uh, analysis, analytical approach to, to deriving these numbers. Um, so I'm in a bit of a quandary here um, as to as to making this this really rather substantial decision between these two very different numbers that make a big difference on something that we know has been an issue out there, which is the issue of of charter schools being able to adequately fund facilities. Mr. Morlock. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, maybe for the representatives from the Department of Finance. Um, I, I tried to do some reading, but maybe you could help me. Um, it, it appears that Governor Brown is pretty supportive of charter schools in Oakland. Is that correct? I think he's supportive of charter schools statewide. Okay, so he's, he's sort of got a a position where he's seeing the benefits of charter schools and is more supportive? I, I, I can't make a generalized statement on the governor's position on just all charter schools. Okay, I'm just trying to dig a little bit, but this grant program would be available to all charter schools, no better, no worse. All charter schools that meet the eligibility criteria. Okay, right, thank you. Should I, should I ask more questions, Mr. Chair? No, 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 no. Oh, Silence, okay. Silence okay. is golden. We haven't had, have we had public comment on this yet? I don't think so. Um, do any members of the public wish to comment on this item? This is the Charter School Facilities Grant Program. Seeing none, um, we're gonna hold this also till the end of the meeting and we may end up holding it open until Friday's Prop 98 hearing so we can get further information. But I'd like to thank all of the panelists for the robust discussion of this, and we'll move on now to item number 16.
Okay, this is Local Assistance Child Nutrition Program. We'll begin with the uh, Department of Finance. Good afternoon, Shirley Dunn with the Department of Finance. The May revision proposes two technical adjustments to the Child Nutrition Program that reflect an updated cost of living adjustment and a revised estimate of meals served for updated actuals of participation. This revised appropriation would fully fund all meals projected to be served in the 2015-16 budget year. Thank you. LAO. Natasha Collins, uh, LAO. Um, we recommend approving the first adjustment of 921000 and we do not have a recommendation pertaining to the second adjustment of $1.3 million. Thank you. Department of Education. Tony Gramos from the Department of Education. Uh, we continue to be a little bit concerned that um, this is not fully funded and that if uh, basically meals uh, spike that we will have to reduce the reimbursement to schools in April and May. So we would like to see a little more of a cushion in case there is that spikage. Thank you. Okay, any questions from members of the committee? Hearing I, just want to, I just want to commend the Department of Education for its use of the word spikage. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, any members of the public wish to comment on this item? Seeing none, I'll ask the staff to read the recommendation and call the roll. Re recommendation on item number 16 um, would be to approve as proposed. Um, Senator Block. Aye. Senator Allen. Aye. Senator Morlock. Aye. Okay, thank you. Show that passing 3-0. That's item number 16. <laughs> item number 17, local assistance, tools for tolerance, professional development, and leadership training. We'll first hear from the Department of Finance. Good afternoon, Chair and members. Aaron Eddy, the Department of Finance. So the governor's May revision is uh, proposing to apportion $2 million in ongoing funding to the Los Angeles County Office of Education for contracting with the Simon Weisenthal Center located in Los Angeles County to provide de professional development and training programs for education professionals throughout the state. The administration views these programs as a very valuable resource to education professionals and that this funding is uh, consistent with how we have provided funding to the center in the past. Thank you. Elio. We have no recommendation with regard to this proposal. Department of Education? Um, the superintendent is, in support, is supportive of provi providing additional tools surrounding this area, um, and we're still looking into this actual item and uh, center. Okay, and the staff recommendation is just to approve this item, just um, reasserting that it's for anti-bias education and leadership training. Um, any questions from members? Mr. Morlock. How is this done statewide? Is it, is it a written program or is it just regional? Um, does anybody have an answer? I can give my best. I think our understanding to this point is that the, uh, the center has a number of programs, educational and otherwise for uh, professional development for, like I said, educational staff. And uh, the idea is that with LA County Office of Education contracting with the center, uh, these programs for professional development will be available to uh, for teachers throughout the state. And it's so it's two million dollars more. So is that a 10 percent increase or a 50 percent increase? What do we put? Uh, I could not speak to the uh, exact percentage increase at, at the moment, uh, but like I said in my presentation briefly, that uh, the $2 million is very consistent with how we provided funding for the center in the past. So that was our, uh, where our rationale was coming from. Yeah, well, then it's a 2% increase. No, so Ian Johnson, Department of Finance, this is actually stable funding, and it's just holding them flat for what they received in 1415. This, this, these programs have received this same l level of funding through various, uh, from various sources in the budget over the years. And so the administration uh, was made aware uh, of these programs and were supportive of them. And so we're, this proposal essentially is to get them to start being funded uh, with stable funding within the Proposition 98 general fund. Yeah, where it says be increased by $2 million, that's the county office of education budget being increased by $2 million to support this program this program starting at zero for this year. So it's it's not an increase for this program. It's a $2 million allocation. 
So it's sort of a typo in the description then? No, not really.